early influences. Well, like most of the people at that time, I grew up into the Beatles, and so George Harrison was there, of course. And uh, when I got my first guitar, I was still into the Beatles, but had also started getting into Deep Purple, Queen, and Led Zeppelin. They were all guitar-oriented bands, so obviously I went to play rock and play guitar because of those guys, and that's pretty much where it started for me. I had been playing guitar for like six months and an ad came on the radio for Jeff Beck. The Wired record was out at the time and he was going to be playing in Philadelphia and his music was playing in the background and I thought, ah, oh, that sounds pretty cool, guitar guy. And so I went out and bought Wired and that became one of the biggest influences in my life, you know. In fact, I couldn't even play lead yet and I remember listening to the record and I could hum the melody in Blue Wind, and uh, one day I figured, actually figured out how to play it on guitar. Only I didn't know about bends, you know, I had no idea, you know, he bends that. I didn't know about bends, so I just kind of played the melody. And you know, it's only three notes, but I was, did it over and over like all day long, and I'm like, man, I'm so cool, I'm playing lead now. So I just started trying to play more lead, like making up patterns. I made up a pattern, that just it was one, three, one, three across the fretboard. And I just start playing it in random orders and random order and just, uh, you know, trying to play lead. So yeah, I still say it's Jeff Beck's fault that I eventually uh, took the route as far as instrumental music goes. It was a great period to uh, come up and to be learning how to play guitar or just music in general. There were so many cool styles of music and great players out there. And so yeah, I mean, it just started from rock. I started taking lessons with a player who was a rock guy, but he really uh, started playing jazz too. And he was studying with Pat Martino in Philadelphia. We live pretty close to Philadelphia. And so he started teaching me about theory and scales and alternate stroke picking, all that kind of stuff. And probably most importantly, he turned me on to a lot of different styles of music that I wouldn't have heard, you know, if I didn't take lessons like Joe Pass and Pat Martino. And that opened up a lot of, even though it never inspired me to become a straight ahead jazz guy. I mean, I couldn't play that. Uh, you know, it definitely influenced me as far as what I do in the rock domain. So yeah, invaluable hearing as many different styles of things, music as possible. So I uh, started playing guitar and my mom was a bit of a rocker. So she had Deep Purple Machine Head laying around. So Richie was such an iconic guitarist. It was obvious that I was gonna get into his playing and you know, I stole a lot from him. Uh, eventually the harmonic minor thing, I think that's where I first heard that, as well as Al Demiola. And you know, I was taking lessons and my teacher was showing me different scales and he showed me the harmonic minor scale, which I call the snake charmer. So, you know, a lot of that came from Richie and also Demiola. And of course, when Eddie came out, you know, that was like, at that point, I wasn't even playing a blue scale yet. I didn't even know what a blue scale was. I was just like learning chords and stuff. And I heard that first record and I heard eruption and I heard that, you know, the tapping at the end. I had no idea what it was. And I thought it was like physically impossible to be able to play that fast. So what I thought he was doing is like maybe playing a note or two and there was a, a delay, like an echo adding a higher note because like, a human couldn't play like that, right? Of course, it had to be some kind of electronic trickery. But, uh, you know, then I started playing lead and I learned, uh, you know, the tap finger tapping and, you know, he was doing that. You know, it was just so amazing when that first came out, actually. And, uh, you know, he was using the Floyd Rose at some point. And at that point, I had a Stratocaster with three single coil pickups and thought I'd try to put a Floyd in that. And that all I had was a hammer and a chisel, so that didn't go very well, so very well at all. But anyway, at that time, the Kramer guitars came out with the Floyd Rose Bridge, and I was quick to jump on. I picked up a Candy Apple Red Pacer, used that for at least three or four years, man. I put so much wood shedding time in on that guitar, you know, when I was really working on my picking and stuff that I still have the body and you can see through multiple layers of um, finish right here on the guitar because my small finger kind of rubs like that when I pick. So the fingernail 
ate through the clear coat, then it went through the red, and then it went through a gold coat, and then there's black. And then I still have that guitar, and you can see all, you know, the black, the gold, the red, and the clear over top. So you know, it was a lot of practicing on that guitar. And I ended up using it on the uh, Pepsi commercial that I played on, and also the uh, Vicious Rumors record, which was my first album that I was ever on. I think, uh, you know, I always try to do what's right for the song or the band I'm in. You know, whether it's an instrumental thing or it's a vocal song, you're gonna approach it differently. And, you know, I always try to do what's right for the song and not like impose my licks or whatever I can do over every song. You know, it's that's a little selfish and it just doesn't fit. You know, you got the song is the most important thing. Besides Vicious Rumors, the next vocal thing I did was with Alice Cooper. And I was in the studio in Millbrook, New York, recording the Meltdown record. And uh, he was like getting ready to do his record, Hey Stupid, and he had like a bunch of other guitarist guests on the record. Initially, I was asked to be a guest on the record, and they wanted me to play two songs. And so I drove up to uh, Bearsville studio somewhere in New York, went right to the studio and recorded two songs, uh, Hurricane Years and Dirty Dreams, in pretty much like a half a day. We went out to dinner, I went home, and I didn't think much more about it. And I didn't really hear much, you know, but it, like maybe a month or two later, they had finished the record and they were going on the road and I was asked to join the band. So I ended up joining the band and doing the Hey Stupid uh, USA tour. And uh, that was a lot of fun, you know, it was really playing big places, you know, bigger stages than I've ever played had ever played at the time, and just rocking out with Alice Cooper, who I grew up listening to. So it was like, wow, this is pretty surreal. It was a really cool thing, a lot of fun. So um, somewhere during the, during the Cooper tour, uh, they kind of changed their plans and decided to go to Europe for six months and not stay in America. And I had my record Meltdown coming out and I wanted to go out and tour. And, uh, you know, so at that point, it just made more sense for me to kind of do my solo thing and go out on the road. And plus, we heard there was the possibility of me opening some shows for Rush on the Roll the Bones tour. And, of course, I wanted to seize that opportunity because I was such a big Rush fan growing up. And I ended up doing, I think it was 10 shows on the Roll the Bones tour, which is pretty insane. It, it was the first time I played my stuff in arenas. And the very first two shows of the tour were at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And that was where I always went to see concerts when I was a kid. And of course, as you're growing up and you're playing and you have dreams, like someday I want to play the Spectrum, man. And I actually got to play there once with Alice Cooper and twice with Rush. The first two shows of the Rush tour were at the Spectrum, which made me even more nervous than I normally would have been. And, you know, I was kind of keeping it pretty cool, but I remember driving in a minivan from my house to uh, the Spectrum and uh, heard the radio, I mean, the ad on the radio on like WMMR, and they're like, Rush with hometown hero, Vinnie Moore. And I like panicked, like, holy shit, it all became kind of reality to me. So I suddenly got really nervous. I approach the UFO songs kind of like I approach mine when I play them live. Like there are certain key parts that are simply part of the song and they need to be played. They need to be there. And then with other things, it's more living in the moment, you know, and taking in what's going on around you and improvising, you know, and just feeling it in the moment, but going for the, the general vibe, but, you know, you know, having some freedom within that vibe. I mean, obviously, in a song like Love to Love, where the there's a melody solo. I mean, how can you not play that? It's part of the song. So, yeah. And then other times where, you know, the, whoever the guitar player was on the original UFO stuff, whether it was Schenker or Chapman, and you can tell they're just kind of going for it. They're improvising, you know, then I'll do the same thing, but play what's right for the song and in the vibe of, you know, the, the song and what they played. 
but I never wanted to be a guy to go in any band and have to just copy everything note for note all night long. I mean, that would take all the individuality out of it, and you know, who wants to do that? It would be like more like playing in a cover band, and yeah, don't want to do that. Well, they were looking for a guitar player, and I think they initially tried to find someone from England, and they searched for a while, that didn't work out, so they kind of expanded their search to Europe and still weren't finding the right guy, so I guess at some point Phil said, well, wherever, we just need a guitar player. And uh, we had some mutual friends. Um, the guy who was managing them, Peter at the time, uh, I had known him because I went on a tour in 1999 when my The Maze record came out and I opened for Michael Schenker. We did 32 shows and at that time Peter was managing Michael and he came out on the road so I already knew him. So he suggested me, but there was an also, also a guy named Jerry Carrillo who uh, I knew who was my guitar tech and tour manager at one point who also worked uh, for UFO, I think he did sound for them. So he said, hey, I think Vinny's, you know, would be a good guy to consider. Peter said, I think Vinny would be a great guy to consider. So I got a call one day asking to send some of my music to Phil. So I just like went through my catalog and picked, I think it was 11 songs, burned a CD, sent it over to England and, you know, didn't really expect to hear much, you know, about it. But like 10 days later, I got a call that said, hey, Phil liked your stuff and wants you to join the band. And I was like, wow, awesome. It started with doing a new record. It turned out to be the You Are Here record. And we just got together in this small town outside Hanover, Germany called Sella. And just uh, Jason Bonham was joining the band with me at that time. So that kind of even made it, oh, this is a really cool thing. You know, playing these songs I grew up listening to, definitely a cool experience. And in the beginning, I thought maybe it would last like three to five years and here we are 19 or 20 years later and I've still been in the band. We've made a bunch of records, toured all over the world. It's been a really great experience and now we're winding down on the farewell tour. Yeah, it'd be nice if it went on a little longer, but as of the moment, October will be the end of it. But yeah, it was definitely kind of a weird thing like playing in this band who I grew up with listening to in my bedroom and jamming, you know, with their songs, their albums, you know, it was crazy. Well, you know, I was with other guitar companies and I just got to a certain point a few years ago where I thought, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, maybe I just like want to kind of like take some parts and make my own guitar. I don't even know if I want to be involved with the company anymore. And uh, I, that's where my head was at a certain point. And then I saw that Kramer was back and I saw the guitars they were making and then a light bulb went off like, hmm, wonder if that would be a possibility. I was working on a new record and started using some of the different guitars for different songs as I was recording and they worked out really well. And I just thought like this, you know, not only going full circle back to what I played back in the early 80s, but just seems like a good fit and I have a good feeling about it. And he's, they seem really receptive to the ideas I have as far as, you know, neck, feel, body, whatever, pickups. And yeah, that's always a good thing. Someone that's open, a company that's open to your input. All right, so obviously you can find me online at vinnymore.com and that's Vinny with I-E, not Y. I'll kill the next person who <laughs> sends me a message and spells my name wrong, damn it. Yeah, so vinnymore.com and also I have two Facebook pages, the official Vinny Moore personal page and then the fan page because, you know, you're limited to like 5,000 friends on the personal page, so I do the fan page. I have a Twitter account, I barely use it, but you can find me there. I post important news and uh, the thing I have coming up here is a new record uh, within the next couple months it is now April so sometime in the summer I would imagine on my own label Mind's Eye Music and just stay tuned to my social media pages and of course I'm gonna blast promo there and, and give updates about all that and um, besides that I'm leaving next week which uh, May 3rd I'll be leaving for Europe to do a solo tour now I come home for a couple weeks and I'm back out in mid-June to start the UFO shows back over to Europe and uh, doing some festivals, some clubs, you know, different things. So 
after being home for a couple of years and sitting around playing guitar, writing and recording the new record, smoking a lot of cigars, it's, it's time to get up off my butt and get out and do some shows again. I'm real excited about it. Now, it's been too long since I've been on the stage. This is Vinnie Moore, and you can get Kramer guitars at AmericanMusical.com. <laughs>